Welcome back to my YouTube channel everybody. I don't know if you can hear the rain but the Irish weather is being very sassy and I've got some torrential downpours which sadly means no greenhouse updates this week but I do have a satisfying organising and declutter video in my office because I added some extra shelving and storage and was able to organise the clutter that was in here. I have been putting off this job because the weather has been so good, I don't want to tackle jobs inside the house, but for this rainy afternoon, I thought I would tackle it, organize it, and it does feel so much better. So I'm gonna get straight into the video. If you are new to my channel, welcome to the community, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. So let's get into it. So you guys will have seen my office look way messy. Like this is tidy, this is tidy. However, I need to add more storage because I've got some clutter here. I've also got some clutter in here I want to be able to open and close the door without wood scraps falling out so my solution is in here it's been on my to-do list for the longest time let me just take this ladder sorry about this so this was a wardrobe that was already like built in in the house in here is my boiler and down here is all my power tools that are squashed in and this is like, oh, oh, this is bad. Why is it? I stuff so much stuff into the smallest of places, but you guys know I'm learning my lesson. So we've got a hanging rail because this was obviously like a bedroom. So what my mission is, like these are lovely and deep, like there's some real good depth. So my goal is to make some shelves so then I can um obviously I'll have to declutter this as well like I have two art easels um so I'll see if one of my niece and nephews want to take them for their house so my goal is to tackle this add storage and that will give me some space because I have some power tools here or not power tools sorry I've got some longer tools that I would love to be able to just pop them in there so the likes of my spirit level I've got some other bits here I've got some like mats as well for my cricket so it would be nice to thin out on the space and also like if I want to kind of declutter the bottom here um so like if I can have a shelf even for like my sewing machine when I'm not using it um so just to give me a bit more like storage and yeah less cluttered okay let me find the first thing I got to do is I need to go to B&Q and I need to get the wood to do this and I'm just gonna get like thick MDF, but I need to measure first because sometimes in the B&Q, the one I'm going to, there'd just be like a cutting service and I think it's free. So if that can like save me some heartache um, of like trying to cut perfectly straight wood, I'm gonna do that. So I'm gonna measure and make a note of the measurements if the wood cutting man is there. If not, I'll just cut it myself, but I'm gonna take measurements, measure twice, cut once, isn't that what they say? I don't know why, we'll see when it comes to measuring. It's like I don't trust myself when it comes to numbers. So 19 inches by 18.5 is what I need for the shelf for in there. Hopefully there is a nice lady or gent on the cutting desk this morning. I'm going over nice and early, so hopefully there is. And then I'm just gonna get some wood. I'm just gonna like wood batten it and stick them down because then at least I can lift off the shelf if this does need to become like hanging storage again down the line so they can easily be lifted in and out so i'm trying to think how many it's it's quite a high quite a high thing so i need to figure out how many shelves i want i'm thinking from here i want to leave so i can like stick that little ladder in because i measured it and that'll fit and then the likes of my spirit level and any tools that are like long in length so like measuring tools so i'm thinking shelving from here so like I'll get four cut just in case. I'll use the scrap piece of wood as far. Okay, let's go get some wood.
you know how I don't trust my mats, but it worked. So I don't know why I don't like use the cutting service more often. I got them cut 19 by 18.5 and I quickly just slotted one in to make sure that it fit and it's bang on, it's perfect. So that saves me a job having to cut the wood bits. So all I have to do, I will have to cut these pieces um, for the side, but that's totally fine. Straight cut. Oh my God, I just found my Bob Ross wig. Like that cannot go in the bin. This needs to go into a sacred space. If you did not see my Bob Ross video, I'd, I'll put a card here. Um, I think it's amusing. Actually, I think I need to crack on my Bob Ross outfit and paint more often because that is quite fun. But um, I'll put a card here if you want to check out the Bob Ross video. So I didn't want to spend a fortune on brackets for shelving for inside this wardrobe and a lot of my tools are quite lightweight and the heavier ones I can put on the other side. So I'm just using these wood battens as my support for the MDF wood. I did get a thicker MDF, I think I went for a 12 millimeter. If you watch my laundry room, well, I wouldn't call it a room. If you watch my laundry nook makeover where I put a shelf in, I did it with the same technique, but I used a nine millimeter MDF and it's slightly bowed. So using the thicker MDF will hopefully prevent that. And then also they're more lightweight tools. So this was the most cost effective way for me to pop some shelving in here. Now you'll see that I done three shelves but I do have a fourth piece and on reflection, I would like to add another shelf at the bottom and I can hang the likes of that tall spirit level and the ruler on the back of the door because there's enough space for the door to close without them kind of clashing. So I think I'm gonna add a fourth shelf so I can pop my sewing machine or my Cricut machine, whichever one, um, into my little wardrobe because that will give me more space and also makes it super easy to just open the door, take out my machine, set it up because I want to kind of have my office as clutter free as I can. Just because I do so much in it, it's like, you know, a craft space, it's an actual writing and office space, and then it's like a DIY power tool kind of space as well. So I am just giving the office a good declutter. A lot of this stuff was able to be sorted away, and I gave my brother some of my scrap pieces of wood, and then I kept some pieces that I have in mind for like future projects. to see how I made this Ikea wall unit so the bottom is a Hemnes that I got for free and then the top is Kallax and then I pop some framing around it I'll put a card to that video and I'll pop it in the description as well if any of you guys missed that this storage wall is amazing because I can fit so much stuff in it now it could do a little bit organizing on the inside but it just keeps my floor free of clutter I've got all my paintings in it I've got my sewing stuff, I've got like sewing patterns. It's just, it stores so much. And I'm so glad I did it earlier, in the, earlier on in the year. I think I did it in March, but it's just given me so much space. Um, and I love how it looks in the room as well. It's got that like faux built-in effect.
So I want to chat to you for two minutes, two minute two will talk. That could be a series in itself. I want to chat to you just quickly about tools. So I do see when you guys leave comments about um, power tools, how can you use power tools and things like that. And I get a lot of requests to do videos on how to use them, but unfortunately I am not a pro when it comes to using power tools. When I buy a new tool, I will research and watch loads of videos on how to use it. So I use Ryobi tools and the reason is because I go cordless. So all of my tools that I have, bar like um, heat gun and like the odd old sander that I might have, they're on cord, but I go cordless. And that's the thing I notice with power tool companies is they kind of get you to marry them because if you buy one set and they're cordless, their batteries kind of only work with each other as far as I know. So some of my tools, it's like half of my tools I have bought like myself as I've needed them. And then also Ryobi has gifted me some tools as well. So the guys are quite good. Like if I'm stuck for like, you know, a power tool or if I wanna try something new, um, they will sort me out with a tool. But I do try and just ask for things that I'm genuinely gonna use and like I'm not gonna waste, you know, a tool. So one of the reasons why I can't give loads of advice on power tools is because I don't, test loads of different brands. So when you want to kind of research like a power tool or anything you are buying, whether it's like a Hoover or a laptop, I go down the YouTube rabbit hole and I just search for videos and reviews and comparisons. Blondie agrees. Oh, I think Blondie is after getting caught in the rain. Where were you girl? The door was open. Oh, she's got fluff on her whiskers. Where were you hiding? So I know the likes of DeWalt is a good brand. I think I'm saying that correctly. Um, like you've got like Bosch. Um, I've also used one or two power tools from Little and Aldi and I think they are cordless. They're just as good. Um, I had a jigsaw from there. It was on a, uh, a cable and I had a drill I think and I gave them to my brothers because I went cordless. If you are new to upcycling, the things I use the most when it comes to tools is my drill and my driver. So, so you've got your drill, but this actually I think has a driver function um, and that is just like a screwdriver. But the one thing I'll say is if you come across these in a set, um, sometimes they'll sell the two of them together, get this set because when you're doing like woodwork projects, I'll find like, I'll drill my pile of hole with this and when I only had this, I would have to change the drill bit um, to the screw top and then I would have to drill in the screw. So I don't have to do that now because I have my driver to do that. So I can drill my holes with this one and drive in the screw with this one and it just saves me time. I feel like... So a drill and a driver, perfect for... That's what I use the most. And then when it comes to cutting, don't forget, if you are a newbie, handsaw. I have like loads of hand saws. You probably won't see me using many hand saws because I have the electric, but um, you can get like small bladed ones, you can get larger ones. And the thing with a hand saw is, especially if you're a beginner, <laughs> I know me, um, you can get like a precision cut. Because sometimes if you're new to using power tools, you might not be used to having the their power, power tools. So the it might be a bit intimidating is the word when you first kind of use a, like a jigsaw or like a miter saw. When it comes to cutting tools, I use my miter saw the most, but I've said this before, my miter saw is like a small one. You can get a bigger one where, I, I don't know the name, but basically you can lift the blade and go like that. I should have got that one. It is larger. I went for the smaller one, but it means I have to set like flip like the wood. You don't get a perfect cut. If you can invest in the bigger miter saw and you have the space. So then my last kind of tool tip is just buy it as you need it, as and when you need it. I sometimes get people saying, give me a list of all your tools, but I look at their page and they're not upcycling anything and it's like, Get in and see, don't buy things for the sake of it and then they're just sitting there and you're not gonna use them. Like you want to kind of save money, that's the whole point of like upcycling. So I have built my collection of tools as I've needed them. So if I've needed to, you know, if I find like I was, I found I was 
needing to get a lot of kind of like wood cutting stuff so I invested in my miter saw but I wouldn't recommend anyone to just go out and buy one if they're only starting upcycling. So to summarize, go cordless. Even my glue gun is cordless. Like the cordless glue gun. Now this is industrial. If you are doing craft stuff with this, the tip is very hot. So I do use it for crafting, but it's it's like an industrial kind of glue gun. Um, the smaller craft guns are, they're not as hot and you can get more precision. I do love <laughs> the cordless glue gun, but again, like you don't have to get it. One of your little crafty ones will do. Okay, back to the summary. Go cordless, buy it as and when you need it. Do your research and look online for tips and tricks on how to use that specific power tool. Another thing is, and most importantly, is health and safety. If you are not confident using tools, don't use them. So ask for help, because I get a lot of questions where people are like, I'm not confident in using it. And there's no magic word I can say to you that will make you confident other than you just build up your level of confidence as you physically practice doing things. So if you, like a lot of the times when I get a new tool, I'll get some scrap pieces of wood and I'll just feel for the tool. Um, because you know, wood especially, you can get some kicks, kickbacks from wood. If you come in like at a funny angle, things like that can like, I've had pieces of wood like flip off the, the blade. So these things happen. So it's really important to have your safety gear and for girls, I think just tie your hair up, have your safety goggles. Sometimes I use gloves, but the problem I have is gloves are quite big on my tiny hands and I have more grip when I'm holding like the piece of wood. So use that to your own judgment. And then, so I am not an expert when it comes to power tools. So if you do kind of see me using one, um, I'm happy to say what that like tool is. But when it comes to like doing demos on tools and comparisons and things like that, I am not your go-to person for that. But the internet, one of the great things about the internet is there is a person for everybody. And I'm sure if you looked up you know people who maybe they're into carpentry I know there's loads of videos like that you could just search you know the tool you're interested in and look at comparisons and things like that so just use your own judgment but what I will say is like happy to inspire because how I got really confident in wanting to use tools and using tools was like looking at I love watching the sorry girls and I remember watching them like a couple I'm watching them like years and seeing them with power tools made me be like I could totally do that I could totally do that and then when I see the likes of you know Hermione um in some of her older videos when I followed her a couple of years ago when she started doing her house renovation I'd see her like using power tools and I was like yes I'm totally gonna do that so just build your confidence over time and don't yeah don't push yourself into doing like all these big fancy projects, if you're just a newbie, just build your confidence and don't compare your middle to someone else. Don't, co no, what's the phrase? Don't compare your beginning to someone's middle. So if you do see me doing certain projects, I'm tackling things with confidence. It has taken me a while to get here and it will for you too. So yeah, comparison, no, just compare with you yesterday. I still do dodgy cuts, you know, I'm a bit of a cowboy character, but I hope that helps. So that is me for this week. I'm all organized and tidy to tackle. Uh, as soon as the weather dries up, I will be out there. I have a piece of furniture coming on Sunday, um, my shelving for the greenhouse and I wanna paint it and I have planned to do a little project. So hopefully the weather will be nice and dry for that. So I will have some greenhouse content next week. Um, and if you missed my brick floor in the greenhouse and a little reveal, you can check out my previous video where I tackled that. So that is me for this week. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button, cheeky thumbs up, and I will see you all in the next video.